All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Chupacabra Tutorials channel. I'm your host, Larry, and we're back for another Photoshop tutorial talking about, well, just really something simple today about how I go about making low-poly wallpapers for various purposes rather quickly, and especially because I use this one in my branding. And the simple answer is, it's really not a difficult process to make one. There's actually a lot of really easy resources, and I'll talk about a couple of methods that you can use today. But for the most part, what I do is I recolor one and add some styling effects to one generated automatically by a low-poly wallpaper generator. I used a different one when I was creating my logo and my original branding once upon a time. But there's always one around that somebody makes for kicks, either a student who's doing it for a project or just somebody that wants it to be available. And one that I played around with a little bit ago is Trianglify.io, which is a low poly pattern generator. And it can generate a variety of different patterns. You can make the cell sizes really big. You can vary them to be more symmetrical and uniform, or you can do like I did manually and you can jankle them like this. And then you can just randomize some different colors. They've got a bunch of different presets here. Uh, the one that I used when I was first getting ideas for my branding just had a randomize button. That, that's all you really got. But in this case, I just want something black and white, and I want something that has a good amount of variation that I can use for a bunch of different stuff. But I'm going to avoid making it too small simply because, uh, well, I don't want to get any of these janky graphical glitches while I play around here today. And let's make this... what is 4K size? Um, file new, I just made this. It's 3840 by 2160. So let's go input that into my generator. 3840, 2160. You can make this any size you want. I like this generator actually quite a bit. And I'm going to make sure there's lots and lots of variation here. And the cells, let's make them nice and big. I don't want to make them too small, like I said. And I kind of like that. Can I generate that? Do I have to, like, click a button? I don't think I have to click a button. I think I can just save this image as. I'll just save it to my downloads folder with all the other garbage that's in there. And then I'll click and drag this into, oops, let me close this real quick. I will go back to this and I will click and drag this once more to the Photoshop icon and then just drump it into the middle of my canvas because I've got a 4K sized image open. I'm gonna have to clean these up though. Because these aren't always the best. Let me just duplicate this and rasterize it because right now it's what's known as a smart object. And I'm just going to clean up with the healing brush tool these weird little lines that are appearing. If you get like one really big cell here and there that's like one uniform color, the world shall not end, I promise you. It'll just exist in a different dimension than our own. And if there's little squiggles here, no one's probably going to notice anyway. The thing that you'll learn really quickly when doing and playing around with graphical art is... Uh, well, if you don't point out a flaw that's really minute, people generally don't notice. So the next thing I want to do is I kind of want to throw a gradient on this, just for kicks. If I double click on this bad boy, I can throw in a gradient overlay and then reduce the opacity a bit and start to create the thing that I desire. But I'm not super duper in love with this. Let's pick a better starting gradient. Is this one good? Yeah, I like that. That one's good. And let's replace yellow with, like, kind of like a tealy green. And then we'll, we'll pull this one over a bit so that it has a better blend point. And let's get a different -y kind of red. Let's bring, mix red into, like, the orange category. So it's kind of like a bright orange. It's almost like a burgundy which will create a lovely purple, which I'll blend over here. And I'll click OK. 
And the way that this gradient tool works, in case you're curious, inside of double clicking on a layer, is you can click anywhere on the side where there isn't one of these colors, and it'll add another swatch based on the one that you just clicked last. And then you can add whatever color by double clicking on it, or you can remove it by clicking on it and dragging down. When you click on a color, these little points here, these are blend points, it tells you where the halfway point is between the colors. And if you get them right up against this one, it looks like there's a sharp line, as you can see over here, where the colors meet. But we don't want that. That looks weird. Don't do not do that. And actually, now that I'm looking at it, I'm not as in love with this color, so let's just move it up into a regular blue dimension. So that it doesn't look funny later. And then we will click OK. And you're probably telling me, Larry, this kind of looks faded and gray. I know, I know, there's a couple ways we can fix that. First off, we can click on a vibrance layer and just jankle up the vibrance really hard. Or the saturation. Or we could increase the contrast, just bump that up a little bit, and then presto change your bingo bango. Still not super in love with this color though, I'm just gonna have to play with this a minute. Uh, let's play, oh goodness, that just murdered my eyeballs, my eye sockets. And if you want to just create like a simple gradient that's kind of like a red into a blue, into a differenty blue, you know, that's completely allowed. You can have simplistic gradients, you can have default gradients, you can go on to color tools online to find a color scheme you like a little bit more. You know, like, there's not really a right answer to this situation, it's just kind of like whatever you like, really, I mean... There is whatever floats your boat filled with goats, so to speak. Probably. Let's try like a foresty green, that might entice me a little bit better. And let's change the angle of this gradient a little bit, so that, uh, it just looks funny. Can we move the- oh yeah, we can just click and drag the gradient so we have it where we want it. Now let's try this by bumping up the contrast, maybe we'll add that vibrance layer back and just bump that up a smidge. Oh no, we have banding, but that's a different tutorial. Banding, as you notice over here, is when it looks like there's little weird lines through your artwork. That is fixed by putting this up into a 16-bit document before you work on it. Uh, I didn't do that in this one because this is just going to be a quick, fun tutorial. So what am I going to do now? I want to add some like effects to kind of give it a little bit of an outline. So we're going to go to Filter Gallery. And we're going to accent the pants off of those edges. Oh boy, we're going to be accenting them so hard. We're going to jank up the edge width up here. And if you can't find accented edges, it's up here in brush strokes. It just it's default with Photoshop. It's just one of the filters people use to add stylishness. And we're gonna brighten up those edges so that they look like they're popping out a little bit. I'm gonna jump down the thickness of them a little bit though so they don't look like they're glowing too much, and this is going to add a better bit of contrast between the delineations of all of the different triangles so that people can notice this a little bit better. And presto, that's sort of how I made my original version of a sort of low-poly artwork. If we go over here, I have prepared a blurred gradient, and another way that we can create a type of low-poly artwork is with the polygonal lasso tool. So we'll just start drawing out little triangles with this bad boy. Uh, I would even recommend doing this with a grid. There is a grid that you can enable inside of Photoshop which makes your life a lot easier in a lot of different respects. And we can go to filter. Is this under other? There's an average in here. Was that blur? Here it is, average. And that takes all the colors in there and looks for the average most notable color and it attempts to reproduce it. And then there's not really a uh, hard way of doing this, it just, you can overlap as much as you darn well please, and it'll still work out just fine. And this is sort of what I did with mine originally, minus the fact that I enabled the grid first, filter, blur, average. And then you can very quickly, using this tool, create a lovely low poly artwork. This is actually the type of method I believe a lot of people used back when low poly portraiture was getting super popular for a bit. 
that allowed them to make really swanky pictures of celebrities without actually having to have like a special generator like I was just showing you. We can actually just can hit start hitting control F to reproduce that effect. Let's just keep going here a little bit. F. Let's do this. And if you follow through here, you can very quickly make a nice stunning image. And we can go back to filter, filter gallery, and put back on those glowing accented edges to reproduce this lovely wallpaper. So yeah, I mean, low poly artwork and stuff is not super complex, and this is a couple different ways that you can do it. I just recommend, since people kept asking me, like, what's a good way to reproduce that wallpaper, that you grab something like Triangulify here, because it makes it super easy. Oh, I could have used this export button. Okay, I'm, I'm derpy, but it still worked. Uh, to quickly generate a wallpaper, if you like this type of art style, that's completely yours, and you can use it for whatever you want. So that's just a quick look at how to quickly make a low-poly wallpaper with a gradient. I hope you've enjoyed. It's been your host, Larry. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll catch you next time. Bye, everybody, and have a good one. I'll give you guys this wallpaper once I have reproduced it inside of uh, a 16-bit file to reduce banding. That'll be a different tutorial. So bye, everybody, and have a good one.